Once upon a time, there was a young girl named Vivi Levian, hailing from a prestigious Levian family, known for their were-rabbit lineage. However, during her coming-of-age ceremony, she failed to transform into a human as expected. Her family considered this a curse and viewed her as a demonized being. Consequently, she was sent away to the perilous Black Panther's territory, but the guards appointed for this cunningly carried her to the forests unexpectedly, Vivi was discovered by Ahin Grace, the leader of the Black Leopard clan, also known as the Black Panther, he was out on a mission. The cute rabbit intrigued the panther who wished to tease the crying rabbit even more. Ahin's servant, Rudd Evren, following his master's orders, took Vivi to a bedroom. Fearing for her life, Vivi attempted to escape but Irvin caught her and gently placed her back on the floor. He reminded her that she was now Master Ahin's possession and there's no way out. To avoid suspicion, Vivi pretended to be unconscious when Irwin called a physician to examine her. Meanwhile, Irwin kept teasing her to be obedient to avoid becoming Ahin's food. As night fell, both Ahin and Vivi found themselves sharing a bed. On closer inspection, Vivi found the shirtless Ahin rather fascinating. As Vivi was about to touch him, he opened her eyes and made her jump. He asked her to cry, and Vivi thought of his obsession with tears. He then took her into his blanket, asking her not to move so that she wouldn't bother him, and then both fell asleep. The next day, Mimi was appointed the new maid to look after his cute possession. Though the rabbit enjoyed her time, she kept trying to escape, but all in vain. At night, a hen came back, and Vivi opened one of her eyes to find him bleeding, as he came back slaying a wolf. With a cunning smile, the panther commanded Evren to escort the head of the fallen wolf to their territory. However, Evren couldn't shake his doubts about Vivi, who had been unusually quiet all day. A hen, intrigued by Vivi's behavior, cradled her in his arms, acknowledging her cleverness. As night fell, Vivi seemed to understand his suffering from the pain evident on a hen's face. The boy swiftly opened his eyes, held her tightly and inhaled her scent, remarking that she emanated pheromones. The following morning, to everyone's surprise, Ahin revealed that his wounds had miraculously healed. The revelation stunned him, leaving him in disbelief. The next day, Vivi found herself face to face with the most influential lady in the residence, Valence Grace, Ahin's mother. The lady insisted on speaking with Vivi alone, believing the rabbit could understand everything. Valence observed quite a few things and the smell of pheromones surprised her a little. Lost in thoughts about the mysterious pheromones, Vivi retreated to her bedroom. Unbeknownst to her, Ahin silently observed her every move. He then approached Vivi, demanding that she heal a wound on his face. When Vivi hesitated, he menacingly grabbed her and prepared to devour her. On his commanding request, she tried healing him but failed, but the handsome man seemed unfazed by the outcome. In another meeting with Valence, under the lady's guidance, she repressed her arteries leading her to feel a strong sensation. During the panther's visit to a temple, Ahin took his toy with him. Vivi was overwhelmed as memories of the past flooded her mind upon seeing the priest who used to call her the curse of animal god. All this made the cute rabbit emotional, which in turn made Ahin and Erwin worried and they chose to return. Meanwhile the jealous Ahin warned Erwin to stay away from his possession. During the night, Vivi pretended to be asleep, but Ahin couldn't help but gaze at her. He confessed that predators are possessive, claiming her as his own. After lunch each day, Valence diligently trained Vivi to control her pheromones, and she even inquired if Vivi could read. To aid her, Valence presented Vivi with a book on the theory of pheromones. While Valence and Ahin were occupied elsewhere, Mimi took Vivi to the garden. There, she encountered a stranger, Run Mannions, a representative from the Lion Clan, having strikingly beautiful golden eyes lifted her up. As Mannions couldn't resist staring at the rabbit, he drew closer to Vivi's face and took a sniff, detecting a strong panther scent emanating from her. Just then, Ahin appeared behind Mannions and instructed him to put Vivi down. It was the first time Vivi felt relieved upon seeing Ahin. She rushed to him, surprising Mannions, who found it unexpected for the Lord of Panthers to have a hobby of raising rabbits. In the study room, Evren handed Ahin papers containing information about no missing rabbits, making Ahin ponder the mystery surrounding Vivi. Ahin remarked that Vivi still smelled like that lion. Evren suggested giving her a name. 
As Evren left, Ahin playfully dipped Vivi in an ink bowl and asked her to write her name, to which she complied. The panther found the name Vivi fascinating and couldn't help but repeat it. He gently lifted her and playfully bit her neck to remove the lion scent from her. Vivi felt her strength waning, and later that night, she found the charming man sleeping peacefully. Gathering her courage, she extended her human hand to touch his cheek gently. Vivi stood in front of a mirror, feeling anxious after glimpsing a human hand at night, only to transform back into a rabbit. Confused by her changing form, she wondered what was happening to her. A hen, observing her strange behavior, playfully interpreted it as a sign that she was ready to be eaten, and then he left. The Levian guards intruded in the Black Panther territory. Suddenly, Ahin, Evren, and other Black Panthers approached, questioning their presence. The guards nervously explained that they came to take the rabbit, but Ahin quickly silenced them, stating that she was his emergency food. As the situation escalated, the Levian guards decided to scatter and flee back to their own territory. Unfortunately, their attempt to escape failed, and Ahin swiftly took down two of the guards and severely wounded the third. Continuing to stab the wounded guard, Ahin demanded answers about the rabbit's whereabouts. The guard finally spoke, revealing that the rabbit was a shapeshifter, a monster, and she was already 18 years old. Ahin came to understand that Vivi's value was not to be taken lightly. In her room, Vivi was reading a book and discovered that powerful inherent pheromones could delay shape-shifting. As she immersed herself in the book, a maid who wasn't Mimi acted suspiciously and kept a watchful eye on Vivi. Startled Vivi tried to escape, and to her surprise, the maid transformed into a wolf with piercing red eyes, chasing her relentlessly. In a state of panic, Vivi rushed to the balcony and closed her eyes, praying for help. There, she spotted Mannions and a hen nearby, but her attempts to seek assistance were futile. With the wolf closing in, Vivi made a daring leap and landed on a hen's head. Both Mannions and a hen sensed the wolf's scent on her, quickly understanding what had happened. However, the room was empty, with no one else to be found. A hen comforted Vivi, and this time he urged her not to cry, and began to soothe her. Evren commenced an investigation and concluded that the creature was a unique mix of wolf and panther. At night, as Vivi opened her eyes, she found a hint staring at her. He informed her that he intended to punish Mimi for neglecting her safety. Vivi grabbed his hand, gesturing a plea against it. Eventually, they struck a deal, the were panther asked Vivi to promise not to cry in front of anyone but him, then he could spare Mimi from punishment. Worried about Vivi's well-being, Ahin taught her secret gestures, raising her left foot in case of an emergency and her right foot when she needed Ahin's assistance. That night, Vivi decided to experiment, recalling how the last time Ahin bit her, she boldly placed her hand inside Ahin's mouth, and to her surprise, Ahin started sucking on it, creating an inexplicable bond. Overwhelmed, she eventually fainted as usual. On the day of the ball, Vivi witnessed fancy carriages arriving, carrying elegantly dressed ladies. Despite the anticipation, Vivi felt small as a rabbit, until Ulfez, the Grace family stylist, entered and praised her. After trying various looks, he gave a thumbs up to the crown look on Vivi. In a grand entrance, Lord Ahin, dressed magnificently in royal white, entered the ballroom with Vivi tucked safely in his pocket, accompanied by Evren. All eyes were on them, and gasps filled the room as the rumors of Ms. Rabbit being Ahin's mysterious partner turned out to be true. Ahin made his grand entrance with Vivi tugged in his pocket. Throughout the ball, Vivi felt nauseous but persevered. Lady Valence approached her, concerned about the wolf attack. The conversation between mother and son felt distant to Vivi, raising her unease. Valence also revealed that the statue at the front door was the head of the wolf that dared to attack a royal guest at the panther's mansion. As different clans danced with each other, Ahin sat with Vivi in a corner. A charming lady from the fox clan with strong pheromones came and attempted to flirt with Ahin, but he casually brushed her off. Feeling nauseous once more, Vivi broke free from Ahin's embrace and hurriedly made her way to the bedroom. As Vivi dashed, Mannions caught a glimpse of her from the balcony. With unbearable pain, Vivi collapsed in her bedroom and lost consciousness briefly, only to wake up and find herself in human form. A stunning girl with rabbit purple eyes and long white hair stared back at her in the mirror. 
suddenly, she heard footsteps and found Mannions with shocked eyes looking at her. At first, he didn't recognize her, but the scent of panthers from her made him realize she was Vivi, a shapeshifter. Vivi told him she was not a shapeshifter nor a rabbit. Just then, a hen, along with Evren and guards, entered the room, demanding to know why Mannions took what belonged to him. When Mannions turned to Vivi, she had transformed back into the rabbit. Both were startled, unable to say anything and unsure of what just happened. Ahin revealed to Vivi that her pheromones were responsible for his attraction to her, explaining why he had covered her with his pheromones, Vivi understood that releasing a lot of pheromones at once caused her to shapeshift. The next day, Vivi struggled to shapeshift again in the garden, but nothing happened. Ahin appointed his black panther, Ash, as Vivi's new companion. At night, Ahin sensed an overwhelming amount of pheromones from Vivi and bit her to counter them. But when she opened her eyes, she had transformed back into a human. As she tried to escape from his embrace, Ahin still asleep, held her tightly. Vivi realized her pheromones had the power to induce peaceful sleep. The next morning, Ahin found a white hair in his bed. The following day, after a peaceful sleep, Ahin questioned Vivi about sleeping next to Ash and if the panther was responsible for bringing her down. She lied and nodded yes. Ahin's jealousy flared up, and he decided to move Ash to Evren's room. As Vivi grabbed his hand and looked at him, she found Ahin in his night cloak dazzling, and she couldn't help but be lost in his charm. The day, during a meeting of heirs from all clans, they discussed the spread of a new, deadly drug that confused shapeshifters' pheromones and could cause death. To investigate, Ahin led a mission to Endelris territory with Evren, Vivi, and Ash. As they journeyed, Ahin couldn't help but keep his eyes on Vivi, feeling like a savage beast enchanted by a little rabbit. As they approached Endelris, the werewolf culprits who released the drug confronted them directly. Ahin stepped out, ordering everyone to stay inside the carriage, and locked the doors and windows. An arrow broke through the window, and Vivi worried about shapeshifting due to inhaling the werewolf pheromones, she looked at Ash with pleading eyes, and the panther understood, swiftly carrying her away, leaving everyone astonished. Ash took Vivi far away from everyone and found shelter in an abandoned house, where Vivi finally felt some relief. However, their tranquility was short-lived as two men in black cloaks, from the wolf clan, entered the house and prepared to attack. Ash bravely stood in between, guarding Vivi. Ahin saw everyone from the carriage getting out and instructed Evren to take care of the other ambushers while he chased after Ash. As he ran, Ahin contemplated Vivi's true identity as a shapeshifter and the effects of her pheromones. Following the smell of blood, he discovered a small house where a shocking sight awaited him. A girl who might be Vivi, with purple eyes and his pheromones on her, was holding an injured Ash and crying. As they called each other's names, their eyes locked in a heartfelt moment. Ahin told Vivi that Ash wouldn't last long in that state, causing her to cry even louder, and she started blaming herself for Ash's condition. She hugged Ash tightly, and suddenly, a mysterious light surrounded them both. Ahin, determined, held her shoulders and made her look at him. He revealed that Ash's wounds had miraculously healed, and the panther was now sleeping peacefully. Ahin folded his arms and asked Vivi who she truly was, to which she revealed her name. He took her into his arms and asked if she had much to say. Vivi's heart felt heavy, and breathing became difficult. The handsome man asked if he should help her, and without waiting for an answer, he bit her neck, allowing his pheromones to flow into her body, suppressing her own. Vivi fell asleep in Ahin's arms. Following orders, the servants awaited Ms. Rabbit and their master outside. When he emerged, he was holding a peacefully sleeping rabbit in his hands. Back in Mannion's territory, Harrington Reston, an aide of Mannion's, found it odd that Lord Ahin was raising a smart rabbit that seemed to understand everything. When Mannion's got a chance to be alone with the rabbit, he flirted with Vivi, asking her to shapeshift. He lifted her and took her to the balcony, talking about Ahin and his pheromones. Suddenly, he spotted two men from the hyena clan whispering and exchanging a bottle. Mannions jumped from the balcony, holding Vivi, and confronted them, demanding the bottle. One of the men was knocked down, while the other threw the drug powder at Mannions. The drug powder caused Mannions to shapeshift instantly, turning into a lion. 
Seeing him in his true form for the first time, with sharp paws and a powerful beast-like figure, Vivi became scared and ran for her life. The lion chased after her, with Ash following the lion. Ahin rushed to join them, instructing Evrin and Reston to assist as well. In the center of the alley, Ahin instructed everyone to spread out and search for them. Vivi and the giant lion reached a dead end. Terrified, Vivi closed her eyes, expecting the worst, but the lion just stood there and started licking Vivi. However, Ahin arrived just in time and checked every inch of Vivi to ensure she wasn't hurt. As they engaged in a conversation, the drug dealers entered the scene, and surprisingly, Ahin raised his hands in surrender. They were taken to a room in the enemy camp, where Ahin explained that he did it to infiltrate the drug matter deeply, and that he had taken a raccoon clan drug to stay alert, the high pheromones from his body affected Vivi, making her feel dizzy. She signaled an emergency, and Ahin quickly understood, taking a white cloth and Vivi with him. He told the lion that the plan had changed, and now he should solve the drug case. Ahin then defeated the culprits and rendered them unconscious. Ahin hid in a closet so that Vivi could transform into her human form. As he peeked outside the closet, he found Vivi in human form, stunning him. Vivi called him, but he was so mesmerized that he simply smiled and called her name with love. When footsteps approached, Vivi covered his mouth, urging him to run away. She wrestled with her thoughts about whether Grace Mansion could be her home and if Ahin would abandon her now that she was human. He interrupted her thoughts by caressing her cheek, and the pheromones made her fall asleep in his arms. Evren and his companions were on a search for Ahin and Ms. Rabbit along the street when they caught sight of Ahin with a girl draped in a white cloth. Ahin pounded on the doctor's door urgently, and the doctor immediately started examining Vivi upon seeing Lord Ahin. He explained that Vivi had inhaled a drug, but the doctor concluded that it wasn't the drug causing the issue, rather, it was Vivi's own pheromones. The doctor suggested a pheromone stabilizer, but Ahin had a different cure in mind. He came close to Vivi and kissed her deeply, using his pheromones to suppress hers and help her regain consciousness. While Vivi slept peacefully, our hero worried about her noble pheromones as the head successor and feared she might leave him now that she had transformed into a human. After two days of continuous sleep, Vivi woke up and realized she was still in her human form. Ahin had gone out to get her some clothes, and Vivi blushed as she recalled their intense kiss. She heard a messenger bird of Ahin at the window, unconscious because of Mannions. When she tried to pull the bird inside, she ended up falling with Mannions. In that moment, time seemed to stop as they gazed into each other's eyes. Mannions took Vivi to his mansion while leaving everyone there tied up to make Ahin furious. Upon Mannions' command the stylist made Vivi ready with a beautiful dress. Vivi started to leave the mansion when a hand suddenly pulled her from waist and lifted her in his arms. Vivi found a bruise in his lips, to which she placed her hand and cured it instantly without letting him know. She started thinking that Ahin had trained her as a passive being who couldn't help herself. He used her all the time. Mannions and Vivi spotted Ahin outside the mansion while they were on the balcony, and she ran to the edge of the balcony, where Ahin finally noticed her. Both were happy to see each other. He expressed his worries about her safety and how scared he thought she might be. He came to take her home, which Vivi hadn't expected him to say. Then, surprisingly, he asked her to trust him and jump from the balcony. Brave and trusting, Vivi took a leap of faith and found herself transformed into a rabbit, safe in Ahin's arms. Meanwhile, in Grace's mansion, Valence was missing Vivi, and Ahin's grandfather, Lord Rillian, had also arrived, waiting for his grandson's return. He inquired about the rumor of a member of the Grace family having a hobby of raising a pet rabbit. Later that night, Mr. Panther confessed to Vivi that they hadn't had a proper conversation in a long time. He suggested using her pheromones to transform back into a human, but Vivi hesitated, explaining that it exhausts her. In the library, Vivi was engrossed in reading about pheromones when Ahin's grandfather appeared, shocked to find a rabbit reading a book. Meanwhile, Ahin and Valence had gone to the Great Temple for a memorial ceremony. He couldn't help but think about Vivi's reluctance to visit the temple, and Valence revealed about grandfather's visit. Now the boy worried about what might happen if his grandfather discovered Vivi's true identity, so he asked Evren to switch dresses with him. Back at the palace, Ahin's grandfather grew increasingly concerned about the rabbit that seemed to understand everything. 
he decided to take the rabbit to the temple, but Vivi resisted. In a desperate move, she used her pheromones to put everyone to sleep, allowing her to transform into a human. When Ahin returned to the palace, he found everyone asleep. He woke Mimi, who told him about his grandfather taking Miss Rabbit outside, but she didn't know what happened afterward. Realizing the situation, Ahin asked Mimi to find a girl for him discreetly. Vivi stepped out of the stables, and a panther bara charged at her, ready to attack. Just in time, our hero arrived and saved her, striking the ground with his sword. He took Vivi into his arms, and she asked him about the temple ceremony. The boy admitted he had other priorities. Vivi urged him not to kill Bara, as he didn't plan to harm her. She even asked Ahin if he would kill her too if she disobeyed his orders. His response was unexpected, and he smiled, assuring her that he couldn't bring Bara to harm after hearing those words. In a surprising twist, he revealed that Bara was a gift from him to her. Vivi pretended to sleep in Ahin's arms, and he took her to the palace. Ahin returned to the room and asked Mimi to take care of her, as it was the first time the palace people had seen Lady Rabbit. Mimi apologized for the inconvenience in the library, and Vivi hugged her tightly. Ahin entered the room, shocked by the sight, and asked Mimi to leave. Vivi felt reluctant to stay with Ahin in her human form and he gestured for her to come to the bed, but she hesitated. Suddenly, she heard him moaning in pain and rushed to his side, concerned. He started laughing, finding her worried expressions amusing. She tried to leave again, but he grabbed her hand, pulling her close, and asked why she was avoiding him and not looking at him properly. They both eventually laid down on the bed, and Vivi expressed her dislike for baskets and temples, and the boy apologized for the first time for taking her to the temple earlier. In the middle of the night, Vivi opened her eyes to find a hen transformed into a panther. She was shocked but calmed herself, realizing that the panther was still a hen. She opened her arms and invited the panther to come closer, and they hugged each other, finding comfort and peace in their embrace. Next day, Ahin told his grandfather that if he misbehaved with the rabbit again then he had to return to the academy. Rillian asked about where he got the rabbit and told him that he must be aware of his class and conduct. Next day, our hero gave Vivi a pocket watch which was actually a feranium to control her pheromones. Quinn, Messenger Bird, and Vivi had spotted Ahin and Everin leaving somewhere from the balcony grill. Impatient to know their whereabouts, Vivi was taken by Quinn in its claws as they flew behind them. They headed to Grace's prison, where Endelrus's drug addicts were imprisoned. Ahin wondered if someone with healing pheromones could belong to a noble family, but Everin dismissed the possibility. Ahin suspected that Vivi might have been exposed to the drug since childhood. Overhearing the conversation, Vivi ran away unnoticed. Upon returning to the bedroom, our boy searched for Vivi and found her hiding beneath the cupboard. He coaxed her to come out and asked if she was crying, but she wouldn't budge. Ahin decided to wait there until midnight. When Vivi finally appeared, she was surprised to find him waiting for her. Embracing him, she wondered why he had always been there for her, and they fell asleep together. The next day, Ahin and Evren prepared to attend the leader of the Rabbit Territory's birthday party. Vivi eagerly jumped into Ahin's pocket with her backpack, but he refused to take her, concerned for her safety. Vivi pleaded with her puppy eyes and tried hard to convince him, but the boy remained firm and left without her. On his way to the Rabbit Territory, Ahin couldn't help but smile the whole time. He told Everin that he hadn't taken Vivi with him because he thought she might miss her family and decided to stay there forever. Meanwhile, at Grace Mansion, Vivi, Ash, and Bara planned to escape from the residence. Just as they attempted to flee, Quinn the bird swooped down from the sky and grabbed Vivi in his claws, only to release her into the hands of Rillian. Rillian, aware that Vivi was defying Ahin's orders, decided to let her go with Bara and Ash to provoke Ahin even further. As Vivi went with Bara and Ash, she noticed that Bara was behaving strangely, and suddenly, Bara attacked Vivi. Just when things seemed dire, Mannions appeared and advised Vivi to use her pheromones. Feeling more determined than ever, Vivi extended both hands and successfully used her pheromones, causing Bara to calm down and peacefully fall asleep. With affection, Mannions offered Vivi a ride to the territory since their destinations aligned. Upon reaching the territory, the guards asked them for the invitation card. 
Fearing the panther, they hesitated. However, Mannion's aide intervened, informing the guards that three companions were allowed at the party and that they shouldn't obstruct the heir of the Lion Clan. They were then escorted to a room, where Mannion's noticed that a hint scent was not emanating from Vivi, which surprised her. This worried Vivi as she realized that without a hin, she might not be able to control her transformations. Just then, Vivi smelled the lion pheromones traveling towards her, she tried to cover her mouth, when her eyes fell upon the pheranium. She ran towards the backpack and jumped over it. In the meantime, disguised as someone else, a hin visited a secret detective and handed over a sample of the drug for analysis. He inquired about families who might have used such drugs and was informed that families with white hair, such as the Waykings, Benzel, and Levians, were likely suspects. This revelation confirmed Ahin's suspicions. When Vivi opened her eyes after the transformation, she found herself in a room surrounded by scared children, with Ash by her side. Trying to distract them, she weaved a fake tale of being a brave warrior who defeated a giant creature to save the world. She warned the children to keep it a secret. The children started calling her Ms. Warrior. Spotting a bruise on her hand, one child took her to his mother, who turned out to be the same doctor who had previously treated Vivi. Meanwhile, Mannions paced nervously in the corridor, worried about Ash and Vivi. Just then, Ahin and Evren arrived, and both parties spotted each other. Mannions was anxious that Ahin shouldn't see the rabbit. Ahin became suspicious of Mannion's agitated behavior and asked Evren to inquire about Vivi's whereabouts from Gorilla, a member of their group. Bensi Gina, the physician, treated Vivi's wound and revealed that she was a professor in the academy where Ahin's grandfather served as a dean. Gina also mentioned that her son Russell had recently undergone a human transformation, just like Vivi. The clock rang, and Vivi started thinking about her entrance at the ball. She asked Gina for help, as she didn't want to appear clumsy and messy during the grand function. Throughout the time, Mannions had been following Vivi and overheard her conversation with Gina. He offered to be her partner at the ball, but Vivi refused and he let go of her hand without saying anything. Ahin received a message from Gorilla that Vivi and Ash were missing, so he hurried to find Mannions for answers. As Vivi was about to enter the hall, she tripped over her dress and fell. Her mother, Avon, suddenly appeared and upon seeing the lady she called out Vivi's name and expressed happiness at seeing her. However, Vivi wasn't satisfied with her mother's fake personality and demanded answers to her questions. She confronted her mother about being told since childhood that she could never transform or speak due to being cursed. She challenged this, pointing out that she was able to transform now. Avon on Vivi's quick-wittedness was inspired and thought that she would prove a benefit to the family. Vivi suspected that drugs might have been involved, which affected her pheromones. Her mother kept her mouth shut on this question. The silence confirmed Vivi's suspicions. Suddenly, a large explosion occurred, and a fire broke out. It seemed like someone had used their pheromones. Guards came to protect Avon, but she refused to let go of Vivi's hand, claiming she would answer all of Vivi's questions. However, Vivi refused and ran away. Avon commanded the guards to capture Vivi, using any means necessary, even if it meant hurting her. Just then, Quinn and Ash arrived to save Vivi. As Vivi considered using her pheromones, Ahin appeared from behind and held her, advising her not to do it. He persuaded the commanders to lower their swords to prevent any further harm. The guards took Avon away, and the crisis was averted. Returning to the Grace Mansion, Vivi locked herself in the room, and Ahin kept pounding on the door, but she wouldn't open it. He suggested communicating through the closed door, with both of them at opposite ends. Ahin tried to explain that the outside world was far more dangerous, but Vivi interrupted, asking him why she had come this far. She questioned why he hadn't told her anything about her childhood and her connection to the drugs. Ahin's eyes widened in surprise, and he pleaded with her to open the door, but Vivi kept on speaking. She revealed that the lady who had commanded her arrest was her mother and that she had been told she was a curse of God. Vivi believed that Ahin only kept her around because of her pheromones, and that's why he hadn't abandoned her yet. In frustration, our boy finally told her that he wouldn't tell her anything in the future either. The pounding on the door suddenly stopped, and Vivi opened it to find him sitting there. But just as she stepped closer, he suddenly collapsed to the ground. 
What had happened to Ahin? Why had he suddenly fallen? The suspense hung in the air as Vivi knelt beside Ahin, trying to wake him up. Panic and worry gripped her heart as she desperately searched for answers. In that moment, Vivi realized that their journey was far from over, and the truth about her past and her connection to the drugs would unfold in ways she couldn't have imagined.